Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about the role of AI uh, in quantitative finance, kind of the opportunity and the challenges that kind of go around this year. So I've been spending a lot of time the last few years at conferences, researching, reading, um, following others, seeing what's going on in this space, trying to get a full understanding of this, especially with the explosion of LLMs here. And I'm going to focus a little bit more on that side of it, but I'll talk a little bit about other sides of, you know, automation and technology here. Um, if you're curious and you want to learn more, I would highly recommend attending some of the conferences like the Cornell Conference, Columbia, um, Fordham's. So Fordham's conference is going to be May 22nd. Um, I am speaking on a panel discussion on understanding the future of machine learning and quantitative finance as I spend a lot of my day job in that space, not as much on the AI space with this. But when you go to these conferences, there are a ton of different panels and discussions like where is AI headed from here? What are firms doing? And you have the top big names that are going to be on here. Uh, so I'll put a link below to Rebellion Research, which is the company that actually sponsors or kind of like organizes and sets all these conferences up. Um, but these are great insights and great tools here. So some of the takeaways and some of the areas that we do see um, with the AI space is just Getting information. So this is one of the hardest parts of quantitative finance, right? If we had all the data, all the information in front of us, we could just solely focus on mathematical and statistical methods, machine learning approaches, and we could just really dive into that. But the hardest piece of this is actually getting information from non-traditional sources. So you get some sort of edge by having different information, new information that nobody else is pricing on here. So imagine this again, buy side, sell side here, doesn't matter where you're working at, you know, everyone's pricing out some sort of problem here, whether it's pricing or modeling in itself. And what we're trying to do is say, what are we going to predict? We're going to predict X. So it could be this price of a stock. It could be the price of a loan. It could be losses. Um, it could be, you know, I don't know, some sort of risk metrics here. It could be sizing of bets, for example, or sizing of trades. Um, and so as you set all this up, you're trying to set them properly. But the more information you have gives you a little bit more edge or a little bit more advantage to price more accurately in this space that no one else is kind of seeing here. So imagine this is we're tr chasing some sort of true value, but we also need to be very, very careful on the flip side of this, uh, on the supply and the demand, on what everyone else is doing here. So you can have two halves with this. Um, AI, especially with LLMs now, has been great in processing a lot of this information that just hasn't been as easy to access. So we go back, I'm gonna say, I don't know, 10, 20 years here, probably 20 or 30 years. Um, data is all tabular, right? We're pulling in data, we're looking at data, we're buying data, we have data vendors here. And then we started scraping data from kind of the web and the internet, and we're using NLP as well to kind of bring all that in. Um, and then with AI now, we're starting to get to the summarization phase of this. So we're able to run, scrape, process, pull a lot of text data, but it's been a little bit challenging on how you process that into an actual insight, some sort of information on this. So back in 2014 in grad school, oh man, earlier than that, back in 2012 in grad school, um, we were looking at doing sentiment analysis of like 10K reports, right? So we would, you know, take C++ for example, run all the text through it, uh, label words as positive and negative, then sum them up and see if it's positive and negative. This failed miserably. And the reason for this is that when you write 10Ks, um, those that are writing the document or writing some other report that's public facing is going to sugarcoat things and kind of spin them in a positive light. So even if it's like, you know, the reality is we're hemorrhaging and mass losses and, you know, we're on the brink of bankruptcy, a firm's going to say, you know, like last quarter was a little bit rough given uh, the volatile, you know, markets within our consumer supply and demand kind of focus and shift within this area. Um, and so we're looking to kind of change strategy and course here, but we do see profits changing in the near term, right? It's just fluff and business right up. Um, but LLMs have been great because now instead of having a human actually go through these processes, right? You're, we've been having people read these, like someone's going through on a computer uh, or printed docs, I'm still in the printed world uh, and going through this, right? Uh, and looking at it and taking notes. Um, and then they're going to be, you know, highlighting out specific things. And then they're going to have to write a report at the end of it here. Now, again, this is what we're doing across the industry, whether you're on, you know, probably less quantitative, we'll be doing a lot more report writing and reading and all that. Um, but now if you can get all those reports, all that information, all the news articles, you can convert them, summarize them into simpler, more cohesive thoughts and ideas. And this is where AI and LLMs has been great because it's getting the document, 
in a bunch of words and we can have NLP help process. And it's giving more of the structure of the timing um, of the words together. It's kind of creating a summary, a logic piece to it. Again, it's not actually thinking, I know, I know, uh, but it's putting all these things together and giving much faster summaries here. Now, why this is helpful? Is this replacing the quants out there? No, it is not. And I'll tell you why in a second. Um, but part of this is going to be, it's just helping in the sense that um, now instead of an analyst doing, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 companies, the same analyst can do five times that, 10 times that, um, because they can pull all these reports, run them through an LLM uh, and get some sort of value summary out of that, make decisions, maybe convert that into usable data into some sort of data frame. And that can get churned into modeling here. That is very tedious, very time consuming. Uh, AI has been great in this sort of space here. Now where the quants are fitting into this with part of this running and stuff, right? You don't need a quant degree to run and pull this information. Um, we're seeing a lot of firms do custom layers on top of the LLM. So you get something like chat GPT, for example, uh, and you're going to train your own layer on top to do your own specific task, right? I don't need to know, you know, what movie stars are, um, or I don't know, other things, like what's your favorite food and discussions on food points and what's in specific dishes, right? The LLM can tell you all that, but we typically don't care about that in the quant finance space here. So what we're seeing is quants are actually ones building out um, and training and setting up um, some sort of specific layer with that. So if you're going to be using it for 10K reporting, for financial reporting, how do you build out a finance-specific tailored LLM that gives you better insights and better summaries? And then also how do we pipeline a lot of these summaries into meaningful data, into data sources, some sort of translation here that we can actually run through some more complex set of models here that gives us a better decision with that. Um, that's going to be the key point. Now, if you're on you know, more of the soft traditional side, it can help you just summarize reports, get insights, information, and then you can pitch these and do investment decisions. But again, if you're going to be more on the quantitative side, it's how do you get that information summarized in logical format down to something we can process more easily and throw somewhat through a model here. Now, other use cases I have seen is people are using these for Q&As. Um, you have some sort of product, you have, whether it's a portfolio construction or an idea or a model, um, you can actually provide this to a customer facing piece here. Now, you don't want your LLMs to give away your secret sauce, right? Um, so again, you can create these sort of custom trained uh, layers, models, LLMs, for your specific product use or business task here. Um, and you can actually use that to answer questions. Now you can filter what you actually give the model. So you narrow it down so it doesn't have, you know, private information here. Um, but again, you're going to be processing and building that out. There is a layer of security you are going to want built into this as well here. So if a company has private information for some reason, uh, maybe you're working with you know, customers, businesses, you have some sort of client contact, there's private information on this, you'll want to keep this more secretive here. But more or less, this is really creating new interesting work, new research as well, because how well does the LLM work out of the box? How well does your one built by the quants that layer on top work for this specific task? Um, how do we get that data from the output, the summaries, the information from that LLM into some sort of usable data process for actual modeling within itself, right? Is there going to be some sort of process for connecting all that together? That's where the quants are at, right? We're getting more of the work. Um, we're automating all the boring tasks. Like, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be sitting around reading documents, legal docs, um, you know, financial reports, and going through again with that highlighter highlighting, and then sitting on my computer like a lackey analyst having to write some sort of summary report, when realistically we can run it through some sort of LLM process here and get some sort of answer faster, quicker, uh, without having to go through a bunch of the nonsense here. So, there's a lot of layers and a lot of work that goes into this, guys. So some of the challenges of this is it's not as simple as like, you know, build model, train model, run output, get results. Like, oh, I'm really excited. Um, again, building and training and getting them tuned to do exactly what you're wanting it to do, a little bit of a challenge there. Um, again, getting those insights and summaries into data processes that we can convert over you know, into some sort of usable data format, right? Uh, that's going to be a little bit challenging as well, um, right? Quant funds are model driven. I have not seen, I don't know, maybe someone's doing it. I have not seen an LLM predicting the stock market because that's not what they do. They're somewhat autoregressive models, look for probabilities of different things being in some sort of sequence uh, and generating that. But they are amazing at processing a lot of information much faster and much easier. So you can hook them up like to news feeds, pull in a lot more information faster, come to faster conclusions, 
and more or less get alternative data sources faster than everybody else is doing it. That's kind of the edge we see here. Um, again, a lot of it's just, you know, customer support and help as well. I have seen people using it with coding. Um, so I know, I know everyone's like, oh, it's going to replace coding. It's not going to replace coding. There's always bugs and issues. And then the code works, right? It generates some sort of output, but it's not the output you expected. It's not technically the correct result. The use case changes. Somebody has to go back in and adjust and change that code. Um, I do have employees that use Copilot and love it. Um, I have looked at it, thought it was dumb, and I hated it. But that being said, sometimes I need a quick snippet of code, and I'll fire off a message to a colleague of mine and say, hey, can you uh, pull this real quick? And they put something in and send it back to me. So it does have many use cases. It's really just streamlining a lot of our work. I do not see it getting rid of the quants. If anything, we are now focusing more on the quantitative aspects more so instead of wasting time on gathering data and insights and processing and doing a lot of reading and all that nonsense, uh, we are getting much quicker at getting like the, the gold uh, out of this big pile of dirt here. And we're able to process and churn it faster and focus on what we really love to do, which is quant finance, math, stats, and modeling. So, and of course we're having fun building out a lot of these layers as well. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always until next time.